Welcome back, everybody. The topic of racial bias can be uncomfortable to discuss, but experts say the potential for bias is present in all of us, and it's vital to understand how it works. Dr. Jennifer Eberhardt is one of the world's leading experts on racial bias, and her new book is Biased, Uncovering the Hidden Prejudice that Shapes What We See, Think, and Do. She's here now to share her research. I find this fascinating. Uh, you. Um, can you differentiate for me the idea of racism from bias? Sure. I mean, so bias, sort of unconscious bias or implicit bias, that's something that we're all vulnerable to. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, in the book, I, I try to um, sort of talk about the science behind it. And um, unconscious bias can be defined as the beliefs and the feelings we have about social groups that can influence our behavior and influence our decision making even when we're not aware of it. We don't know. Yeah. Now, as human beings, we have shorthand for a lot of things, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. we we assess a situation as we walk into it. That's right. So, nobody should feel you know, bad that they have biases. This is just the prism that we we see the world through. Our, our hope is that we become aware of them right. and that we infuse them with our values. So that's right. How do we do that? How do I recognize the prism through which I see the world? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's hard for people. Uh, I think one of the ways to do that is to sort of think about the fact that bias is not something that we are acting on all the time, that there are certain situations that make us more vulnerable to bias than others. And so like figuring out what those- Like high stress situations, High stress, right? that's a good one. Or when we're, we're feeling threatened, when we're feeling um, depleted uh, cognitively, yeah. uh, when we're having to make a decision really quickly, so when we have to act fast, um, we're more likely to fall back back on these automatic associations that we have. And so, you know, at that point, our decision making gets infected by bias. And the reason why we want to know more about this and why I want to know more about this is that there's a real consequence to other people who are being oh, judged sure. in this way, even if you don't mean it, you don't think you're doing it, whatever sure. it is, <laughs> systemically and personally. Yep. Um, describe for me, if you would, and for our audience, just a few examples of how that might work. Well, yeah, so bias can sort of impact people's lives in lots of ways. Um, everything from sort of being seen as suspicious for being in the wrong neighborhood or, um, you know, sort of teachers can, um, you know, either be influenced by bias when they're disciplining their students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, managers can be influenced by bias in the workplace when they're deciding on, you know, um, sort of hiring and promotions and so forth. And even and jurors. And gender as well oh, as Oh, gender race, too, right? yeah. It's, yeah. Yes, a there are lot lots of things. Exactly. There are a lot of social groups and people have biases about lots of different social groups, not just racial groups. Right. Um, we can even be biased about ourselves, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we've absorbed some of these lessons. That's so maybe right. Maybe as a woman, you may feel like, well, I'd better not speak up about X, Y, or Z. Right. And it's part of your implicit bias and not to your own benefit yes. at all. Yeah, um, that does so happen. What does science tell us about how we ferret this out? So I, I think, again, um, sort of understanding that it's, um, we need to do more than just know what it is, but right. we need to know how to manage it. And so once we understand the triggers for it, um, you know, we can, we can make different decisions. And so if we know that when we're thinking fast, when we're, you know, sort of forced to think quickly that this is um, possible, that this bias can mm -hmm. actually influence us, then maybe we want to slow down. Um, if we know that when we're stressed, you know, this is something that happens, maybe we want to relax or not make certain decisions decisions when right. we're under that kind of condition. Um, when the we don't monitor ourselves. The 10 seconds that your grandmother told you exactly. to wait <laughs> turns out to be really important. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> that and drinking water, that's what my mother told me. But really? I guess the drinking water has nothing to do with bias. <laughs> Same thing, it's just like slowing down so yeah. that your executive function can catch up to your amygdala screaming at you at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a fascinating <laughs> topic. How did you get started? You have this amazing educational pedigree on this topic. Yeah, I've been looking at this for well over 20 years, and so um, this book is kind of a, an accumulation of that knowledge, and not just research that I've done, but research that lots of other social psychologists in, in my field have done. And I felt like the time was right. You know, just last week, uh, the Pew, you know, Research Center put out, you know, the, the results of a survey showing that um, I think it's um, six in ten Americans feel like race uh, relations in this country right now are generally 
generally bad, and the majority of Americans feel like things are getting worse. And, and so I feel like a book like this that talks about the why and talks about the science, you know, behind um, these issues and issues of bias can really move yeah. us forward. I think people want to live in a more equitable world, yeah. and we're trying to figure out how to do that. Yeah. So how has this research, yours and other people's, been applied to companies, to institutions? I'm thinking about police departments, others that might you know, really want to examine this. How does it apply in those circumstances? Well, uh, it, it, um, directly. <laughs> so, yeah. so for example, <laughs> I think, um, so next door, um, take uh, one example. They had an issue with um, racial profiling on, on their platform. Platform. I don't know if most people I think know about Nextdoor is just a, it's an uh, app. It's an app that you a use to, a neighborhood app. So you know neighbors can communicate you know with one another and share things and so forth. But um, there was also an issue of people reporting suspicious you know act activity or suspicious men, um, and, and usually they were black men. Uh, and so uh, you know Nextdoor wanted to figure out well how do we you know curb this? And they went to the literature on bias to try to figure it out. And they um, you know came to understand that it was the thinking fast that could really um, sort of activate these right. biases and so they wanted to try to figure out how to slow people down because when people report the suspicious activity they're in a heightened state and they're trying to get the message out fast and so they um, put in um, uh, you know sort of these these questions that uh, people have to ask themselves before they can post about suspicious activity. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah so they have to say you know you know what is it about the person's behavior that is suspicious so it can't just be the person's race, right. for example, that makes them suspicious. And they have to describe the, you know, the person in more detail than beyond race. Um, and then they're also told about, uh, given a definition of what pro uh, profiling is, and then told that, that it's prohibited on the on the platform. And so they take this, you know, you see these, the, these messages in airports all the time, if you see something, say something. And so they modify that to, if you see something suspicious, say something specific. And interesting. It is. Yeah, it is interesting. And that simple modification actually um, led to a 75% drop in racial profiling on wow. the app. Wow. So, Isn't yeah. that something? Yeah. Well, we have the potential to get better and we smarter do. around these things. We and do. This research is part of it. Thank you so much for oh. coming to talk to us about this. I love the book. And oh. I hope everybody will go and nab it and read it. Dr. Eberhardt will be speaking tonight at the University of Temple United Methodist Church at 7 p.m. The event is hosted by a university bookstore and the UW Alumni Association. Thanks very much. Thank you. Pleasure to talk to Appreciate you. Appreciate it. When we come back, the dying art of panoramic eggs. They are wonderful to look at and they're tasty. A Linwood woman is keeping the Easter tradition alive. She'll show me how they're made right after this.